Okay, go ahead. Okay, I've been busy cleaning out my room today. I have 36 years worth of uh, long memories. And, and who are you? Oh, I am Sheila Condra, and uh, today is my official day of retirement. I've been here at Bar Reef High School in Montgomery, Indiana for 36 years. And that's what happens when you try to record. Hold this pause then. Get that off. Sorry about that. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so as I've been cleaning out, I had to consider that uh, the FETS program will not exist any longer at Bar Reef. I had so many memories and so many things made by a lot of students, scrapbooks, quilts, other kinds of projects that I wanted to be able to share those with people of the community, especially the students who had made those. Uh, this is one example. I sponsored a club, which was called FHA when I started. Then it changed to FCCLA. And then the last several years has been Facts Club. But this is one of the things that hung in my room many years. Uh, students were able to make a quilt block. Like this is Carrie, Carrie Gwynn, who is now on our staff, Carrie Boyd. And just some others, and it's just been a wonderful experience for me to go through and think about all the past students. And um, many scrapbooks, as I mentioned, which also will be going to the museum. This is something that a lot of my students would remember because as junior high students, one of their projects was a sewing project, and they were able to choose from different cartoon pillow kits what they would like to make. So this is one that I made and I've used as an example for many years. With that sewing project, sewing wasn't the main skill that was the objective, but it was to learn how to um, begin a project with a goal and then to finish that. Uh, students were amazed that they could actually sew. And it was a really, really uh, rewarding experience for me to watch them come in, not being able to thread a needle, and then being able to have a project. I've heard through the years that many of those projects still exist at mom and dad's house, and uh, mom has kept them, and, and it's been very interesting for me to hear from parents about that. You know, some are probably 20, 25 years old with that. Um, we did begin as home economics back my first year, 1977, 78, and at that time, most girls took the class. Through the years, I've had guys, junior high, boys and girls were required to take it. We did a little bit of sewing, a little bit of cooking, and those kinds of things. But through the years, it's changed. My job really focuses more, or it did, on careers. So every sophomore student had to take a careers class. It was a requirement where they explored different kinds of careers. I also created the internship program here, and that was in 2004-2005. That was the first year for that where I sent kids into the community and they were at different um, businesses, hospitals, uh, doctor's offices, and, and so forth. And that's been a very rewarding experience for me also to see how they grow and um, some of what they have done so much different than in the classroom. Several students come back and talk about how, it, because it was so independently done, I would give them assignments, they would do those. They'd have to come back to me on their own time to turn those things in. They were responsible for turning in timesheets and all that. And several of them told me that prepared them for college more than any other class, just because of that independence in the syllabus and, and stuff that they had with that. It's a pretty bittersweet day in that uh, I'm looking forward to retirement. But as I go through all these different memories and think of a lot of kids yeah it's it's difficult yeah now I remember this room as a home ec room but it, it was two rooms when I graduated in 1974 you said during the renovation you had them tear out the middle wall here yeah. about where the desk is isn't it uh, yes we can actually see on the floor there's a little bump mm -hmm. where that is uh, things are a lot different than they used to be with computers yeah. And we have, you know, our grades are all kept on the computers. The attendance has been like that. When I first started teaching, any copies that we made were with the old mimeograph machine. Yeah. Um, so a lot different than it used to be. I don't know if change is always good in that respect. But uh, it's been a good career. And a very nice uh, community 
a lot of support from the families, and I think that's one of the things that makes Bar Reef so great. Yeah. Well, um, you've been teaching them from 77, you said? It's, yes, that was the fall of 77 is when I started. And you started, and uh, you're finishing here in the May of uh, 2013. So the time does fly, doesn't it? It certainly does. So, uh, certainly does. And I appreciate that uh, you took the time to record this with us. I do want to say on the record that uh, you're donating several things that we've documented by photo and by donating them to the museum. You give us unrestricted use of those uh, items to do with them whatever we need to do with them. I look forward to displaying these quilts. Uh, the scrapbooks are very interesting. Some of my classmates are in that first scrapbook from 1974. So they range from 74 until now, pretty yes, much. Yes, but there are several years that are missing that either did not get completed or I don't know what happened to them. But right. And we have several other items that document uh, the history of Bar Reef High School and, uh, and your role here. So I appreciate you taking this time. and. Uh, I'll, uh, if you have anything else to add, you know, we'll be finishing up then. I think we're, we're finished up. Well, God bless you for your work, and uh, as a Bari Viking, I appreciate the work that you've done. Thank, Thank you so much, and I'm, I'm really glad that this can go somewhere where other people can appreciate it. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. And the museum is at 212 East Main Street in downtown Washington.